Hey guys. Um, so I've never done a video like this before in my life. Never thought that I ever would. And I'm very nervous. I'm just gonna throw that out there from the outset. You can tell I'm not wearing my hat. Um, that is the level of reverence that I have for what I'm about to say in this video. Um, I've never said anything like this, never thought that I ever would, but I believe that the Lord has given me a prophecy to speak on his behalf, okay? Like I said, never thought those words would ever come out of my mouth, but I am trying to be obedient here and to the best of my ability, do as God is commanding me to do. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm very nervous, so please forgive me, okay? Um, I'm going to try and lay this out to you as to how this all happened um, so you can understand what it is I'm supposed to be telling you. I was Last night I was playing video games. It was late in the night. It was like 1, 2 in the morning. I had just gotten done speaking to a sister in Christ, and I was just sitting there playing some video games, okay? Um, wasn't really in scripture, wasn't really thinking about anything. I was just relaxing, playing some video games. And suddenly the word Zerubbabel came to my mind, all right? Now, to my own shame, I had no idea who or what Zerubbabel was, okay? Never heard of Zerubbabel, never studied Zerubbabel, knew nothing about Zerubbabel, um, didn't even know that it was a person. I had no idea what this was. Um, and the word clearly came to my mind. Not knowing what it was, I didn't think anything of it, and I kind of just put it to the back of my mind and went back to playing video games. And an hour or so, maybe two, um, went by and suddenly the word Zerubbabel came back to my mind, okay? And this time it was more clear and I was, at this point, I, I stopped doing what I was doing because I had the, the conviction that this was important and I had to look it up. And so I stopped doing what I was doing, I grabbed my phone and my ignorance was such that I could not spell the word. I tried spelling it with an S, I tried spelling it with a C, couldn't spell the word. I had no idea what this word was, who it was. I didn't know what this was. Um, and so finally, Google helped me and I found Zerubbabel. It was spelt with a Z. Did research and found that Zerubbabel was a biblical figure from Haggai chapter two. So now my interest is peaked because I've never heard of Zerubbabel before. I knew nothing about him. Didn't know it was a person. And I had this name pop into my head twice now, very clearly. Um, and so now my interest is peaked. Okay. Um, I called my, that sister in Christ back that I was talking to earlier to talk to her about it. And then I got off the phone and I kind of slept on it, played a little bit more video games and I kind of slept on it. And this morning I went to Haggai chapter two, where Zerubbabel is talked about. And I started reading through, uh, Haggai chapter two and this is where um, I believe the Lord is wanting me to relay his message, okay? So I'm going to, to read from Haggai chapter 2 where Zerubbabel is mentioned, and then I'm going to give you a confirmation that I received, okay? Now, Haggai chapter 2 is titled, The Coming Glory of God's House. As we read through Haggai chapter two, I need you to remember what is God's house, all right? The house of God is a reference to the temple system, okay? The temples were a house of God, the first and second temple. I want you to remember that in this dispensation, in, in the new covenant, we are God's temple. We are God's house, okay? Paul describes us living in tents or houses in this current form, waiting for the day when the perishable puts on the imperishable and we are glorified and we get our new house, if you will, our glorified body, okay? In the current dispensation, in the new covenant, okay? We are the house of God. God no longer dwells in buildings made with human hands, in, in human-made temples or churches. He now, in the new covenant, through Christ and the blood of Christ, dwells in us, we are the temple of God under the new covenant, okay? It's not a physical building, all right? And temples are referred to as houses, okay? Houses of God. 
In the new covenant, you and I are houses of God. We are the temple. It is not buildings made with human hands, okay? I need you to remember that when we're reading through Haggai, okay? Um, when, when Paul says, in the twinkling of an eye, we will be changed, he's referring to what he talks about in Romans 8 when he says we're in these current houses groaning for our new bodies, our new houses. We don't know yet what we will be right? Um, and he says the perishable, this current body, this current house will be put off and put on the imperishable house, okay? It's important for you to understand that he's referring to glorification. When we are glorified, when we receive our glorified bodies, our new bodies, okay? Under it's important to understand this as we're reading through Haggai, okay? Haggai chapter two, in the seventh month, on the 21st month of the word, uh, on the 21st of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, governor of Judah and of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people saying, who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now? In comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong Joshua, son of Jehozadak the high priest, and be strong all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, in a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. I want you to understand that I believe what the Lord is putting on my heart now is that he is declaring what I just read to you right now. I'm going to read it again. Thus says the Lord here in his word. I believe the Lord is declaring this right now. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more in a little while, I will shake heaven and earth and sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Remember what the temple is. Remember what it is that we're waiting for, our blessed hope, when our perishable body puts on glory the imperishable. I'm going to read it one more time, a third time. Thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while, in a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former. I'm going to repeat that one more time. The glory of this latter temple will be greater than the former. We are the temple of God. What does Paul say in Romans 8? We groan in this former temple to put the perishable to put on the imperishable, to put on glory. What does Paul say? In the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. I'm going to repeat the, the passage one more time. The glory of this latter temple, this later temple, shall be greater than the former. Guys, I want you to understand that's referring to glory, glorification. What he means when he says, I will bring glory upon this temple is glorification of the temple of God. Who are the temple of God? You and me in Christ. And in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Now, I want to go... And I want to read the second time that the Lord speaks to Zerubbabel and he gives the same prophecy a second time. How many times did the Lord say to me, Zerubbabel? Two times. How many times does God speak the same prophecy to Zerubbabel here in Haggai? Two times. Here we are in Haggai chapter 2 verse 20. And again, the word of the Lord came to Haggai on the 24th day of the month saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, 
governor of Judah, saying, I will shake heaven and earth. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the Gentile nations. I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. The horses and their riders shall come down, everyone by the sword of his brother. In this day, says the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Sheatil, says the Lord, and will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, says the Lord of hosts. So we have the Lord saying here twice, that he's declaring that once again, he will shake heaven and earth. He will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. He will destroy the strength of the Gentile kingdoms. He will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. The horses and their riders shall come down and by one and every one by the sword of his brother. The Lord is declaring in his prophecy here, the coming glory of his temple and the destruction that will come about at the same time. Now, this is where it gets very difficult for me, okay? While reading this passage, especially this last part, I'll read it again, verse 23. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Sheatel, says the Lord, and will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, says the Lord of hosts. When reading this, I had the discernment that the Lord was speaking to me as if I was Zerubbabel. He was making me a, a, a type of Zerubbabel, and he was wanting me to share this message to be his signet ring. Now, if you don't know what a signet ring is, I had to look this up myself and learn about it myself. A signet ring is a symbol um, that an ambassador of a king wears when he goes out into the world or to another nation and he wears this signet or this, sim this symbol of the king that he serves to tell other nations that he serves that king. That's what a signet ring is. It's a sign that that person is a representation or a representative of the king who he serves. So when God says he will make Zerubbabel his signet ring, it's saying that God has chosen Zerubbabel to be his representative and deliver a message, the message that he just chose, that he just spoke here in Haggai. And when reading this passage, I had this discernment that the Lord was saying that I was a type of Zerubbabel, that he was telling me to be his signet ring and proclaim this message. When I came to realize this, naturally, my knees started to get very weak and I started to buckle and I spoke out loud. That is a lot of pressure. And immediately in my spirit, I heard you asked for this. And in a flash, I remembered a prayer that I spoke just a few days ago, right before I put that video out about 2024. After I had listened to that sister's video, I prayed a prayer. And I said to the Lord out loud, Lord, if this is happening, if this is real, if this, if the time is near, if all of this is about to take place, please tell me, let me know so that I can declare it so that I can tell others. And I said these exact words. I prayed the prayer of the Bible. God, choose me, send me. That is what I prayed. And I forgot all about this prayer until that very moment when I said, this is a lot of pressure. And immediately I heard in my spirit, you asked for this. And it flashed in my mind that I had prayed that prayer. And I said to the Lord, Lord, send me, choose me. Guys, I believe that the Lord is proclaiming through his word that the time is here. I will shake heaven and earth. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the Gentile kingdoms. I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. The horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. I'm going to read again the first time that he spoke this to Zerubbabel. In verse 6 of Haggai. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more in a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. 
I believe that the Lord is declaring this right now for such a time as this. One, as a warning that a time of great war and strife is coming, the Lord is going to shake heaven and earth. And two, as an encouragement to his body, to his temple, that the thing we have been waiting for, putting on the imperishable, our glorification, our glorified blessed hope, that day is upon us and it is near and we are to be encouraged that the Lord says that time is now. It's soon, it's coming, and God is proclaiming it to his children. I never in a million years thought I would ever let those words come out of my mouth and it is not easy, it's scary. I don't, I don't ever want to be a false prophet. I don't ever want to speak falsely in his name or speak lies in his name. But the way that this all came about, I would be being disobedient if I didn't tell you what I just told you, in my view. I, I, I felt very strongly, in order, for, in order for me to have done this, it would have had to have been that, that this is what the Lord was, t was saying. Okay, I did not know anything about Zerubbabel, guys. I didn't know who Zerubbabel was. I didn't know if Zerubbabel was even a person. I knew nothing. I couldn't spell it. I knew nothing about Zerubbabel. And his name was put in my head twice. When I looked, it brought me to this passage. Just so coincidentally, a few days after me putting out that video about 2024, after I sent the prayer up to the Lord, Lord, if this is all happening, if this is all true, let me know clearly so that I can warn people, that I can tell people, send me, choose me. And the Lord answered my prayer and I would not dare not do as I requested of him. I asked for him to send me. I asked for him to choose me so that I could warn people and declare this and far be it from me to not answer the call when God answered my prayer. So that's what I'm doing. Please know that this is very scary for me. It's very hard for me to say this. I... I, I don't consider myself a prophet. I am nothing. Um, any The only good in me is Christ in me. Uh, so this is not pride. I, I, I'm only doing this because I believe that that's what the Lord wants me to do. And I don't know what else to say, guys. Um, I'm falling on the words of, of the Lord here to Zerubbabel when he says, Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I coveted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. That is a message for me. That's a message for all of you. God is telling us, do not fear. Be strong. I am with you. And this message is both a warning to the world in rebellion and an encouragement to the body, to the house of the Lord, to the temple of the Lord, that he will soon fill that temple with glory and that our redemption draws near, that our blessed hope draws near. Um, I know, I already know, I'm going to come, um, come under an enormous amount of attack for this video and that's okay because I would rather face the wrath of men than the wrath of God. I am far, far be it for me to not obey him. And if he chose me to give a message, not give it. I will take the wrath of every man on earth over, you know, not being disobedient to the Lord on this, um, that he blessed me in such a way that he would allow me to be used by him in such a way. Um, I want to honor him the best that I can. So I pray that this message um, did that. I pray that I, I did this the right way um, and that this was what God wanted um, to get out to you guys. I love you guys.